See that? That right there. That is my favorite feature of this keyboard. Not this switch. That's a good switch. This switch right here. Love it. Like it. Yeah. So, usually I record Tuesdays because I have a quiet studio, but it looks like my quiet studio has gone for a while. Let's see what we get anyways as we go talk about the Keychron K2. Today, what we're gonna talk about is this, the Keychron K2 um, mechanical keyboard with Gatoron Brown switches and a whole bunch of other RGB modes that I actually don't use. Oh, there you go, now you should see. There's colors in there. Anyway, how does the Keychron K2 shape up as a keyboard for your iPad, for Mac, like maybe for Windows, I guess for Windows, I don't actually do Windows, so it doesn't matter. And I actually forgot to start timing my time, so I don't know what's happening time-wise. <laughs> So the Keychron K2 is a 75% keyboard, 75% of a full size. A full size has the inverted T, like a separate spot for the uh, arrows and a separate spot for a number pad. The 75% with the notable and notable, I love it, addition of the top function row, which gives you full media keys for Mac OS, Windows, Android, iOS, stuff like that. That was one of my big complaints about the last keyboard I reviewed, the Echo 3068. It did not have full media keys. You had partial media function if you use their function key, and then if you um, you had play, play pause, fast forward, maybe that's it. Like There was not a lot of function on that one, so you just didn't have it. This one, full media keys, full brightness for your iPad, um, full brightness for your Mac, full play pause, everything's there. It does expose if you want it. So, although, who uses expose? Seriously, I never use expose. I accept to like show something off and then I hold shift because it slows the animation down. But I never use expose. So, but it's there if you want to use it. This also has for you Windows users a dedicated print screen key, which I actually hate because. I always just use Shift Command 4 to screenshot on iPad and to screenshot on Mac OS, and I don't need the dedicated print screen key. All it does is get in my way when I am trying to hit backspace sometimes and accidentally print the screen and take a shot of my screen, and then I have to just delete the screenshot. So it's annoying for Mac users. I have the Gatoron Brown switches in this. You can get it in two other switch types from Gatoron, either clickier or not clickier, I don't know, I think it's blue and red. Um, the Gatoron brown switches are, they're a little, they're softer, they're not mushy by any means. They're softer than the Cherry MX Brown on my Echo 3068. They are not nearly as noisy, so they're just different, they're not bad, they're not nearly as clickety clackety. They're switches, they work fine, I like them, they're fine, I, I don't know. I'm Clearly I'm not a switch nerd. One of the big issues I had with the Aqua 3068 is, uh, issue? Mistakes I made with the Aqua 3068 was that I got it and it didn't actually support Mac. So that meant I had my uh, option and uh, command keys flipped. The Keychron K2 has a dedicated switch on the side to switch from Windows slash Android to Mac iOS. And it's great, it works. I didn't try switching it back, I just switched it to Mac iOS. For Windows people, it even comes with uh, like Windows keycaps or and Mac keycaps, so you can switch it around. 
Uh, it comes with a keycap puller, which is great. And uh, actually kind of a cool USB-C cable. It's USB-C with a 90 degree bend because this is a weird keyboard and has its USB-C port on the side. But it comes with a 90 degree bend and into a USB-A. Now what this doesn't have that a lot of other mechanical keyboards have is layers. This does not has no layers. So you just, you get what you get and you don't get upset as my daughter says, which she learned in preschool. Um, you don't get layers. There's a function key. The function key allows you to access the Bluetooth settings. It allows you to change some of the LED settings because um, it's got lots of LED color settings that you can change with the top right hand key, which I changed to orange and it changes the style of uh, lighting. And then for some of the solid colors, you can hit function in the arrow key and change the actual color it's gonna show, whether it's you know blue, red, pink, whatever the other color happens to be. The Keychron K2 has two ways to connect to your devices. So it has Bluetooth and it has its USB-C to A cable. I assume it worked USB-C to C, but I've never actually tried. So let's just say it totally does and you'll just believe me that I did all the research on it, even though I didn't. With that, you have three Bluetooth profiles. You hold the function key and then hold one, two, or three for one of your Bluetooth profiles. It will start flashing rapidly underneath the key. And then it will start pairing. You can bring it up on your device. You go to your settings, you go to your whatever and pick the keyboard and you're paired. That's it. And to switch devices, you press function and touch one, two, or three and you switch the Bluetooth profiles. As far as Bluetooth connectivity goes, it's been great on Mac OS. I have, no, why did I say that? It's been crappy on Mac OS. It's, it, Mac OS has been bad, actually. It's been laggy. Um, it's been laggy through the USB hub. It's been likely directly connected to it. But I've actually seen a few people reporting this. I actually heard this on a recent episode of ATP podcast, Accidental Tech Podcast, where Casey List was saying with his Bluetooth magic trackpad that he'd like click and nothing happened and click and nothing happened and suddenly be like 15 clicks because it just caught up all of a sudden. I find that repeatedly on Mac OS with wired, with um, Bluetooth, with anything, with multiple keyboards. I actually pulled out recently, uh, I pulled out some of my other keyboards that I have around. Same thing happens sometimes. It's a Mac OS problem. I don't think it's a keyboard problem. But on iPad OS, whether it's Bluetooth or whether wired, I actually don't notice a difference between either of them. It works great, wired or Bluetooth. Charging and battery life on the Keychron K2 has been good been good. They say it takes about six hours to charge it. It's got a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, uh, which is supposedly the biggest battery you'll find in a keyboard. Eh, sure, whatever. Um, I tested it over about six weeks now. So two, three week trials where I charged it up fully one day and then didn't, didn't charge it at all. Like specifically dealt with any Bluetooth problems I was having with Mac OS and kept working with it and left it on with the LEDs on full brightness. Now the LED was were set at different things because my kids came in and played with it and they wanted to like see, let's see it flashed at, let's see this, let's see a solid color, like whatever. So I just, whatever they set it as last, I just left it at that. Sometimes it was where you press a key and then the keyboard lights up on a row or on a key or waves or whatever. Either way, it lasted about three weeks and I think that's pretty good. I'm using it say three, four, five, maybe five hours a day. Um, auto sleeps after about 10 minutes in Bluetooth mode. So it would auto sleep then. And I am always, always turn off my keyboard and my mouse and flip the mouse over when I leave my desk because kids are terrible and they're gonna touch your stuff. I have a hard drive mounted to my Mac right now that's called like A-S-S-F-N-T-H-Q because I didn't realize that it was actually connected to my Mac at the time and it was typing and it renamed one of my hard drives. So that's a middle position on the switch. Uh, all the way forward or all the way to like towards your computer is Bluetooth and all the way towards you is cable. Middle position is um, off. And so my big gauge for keyboards or any input device is when I want to use it 90% of the time, is it just powered? Yeah, it it is. It's powered. If I plug it in every couple of weeks, it'll be powered. One thing it doesn't do though is report the battery level to iOS. So you just have a keyboard. You have no idea what the battery level is and that's it. Now the keyboard will let you know when it's charging and by having the red LED over by the USB-C port will turn on. When it's low on battery, it will start to flash for you and at 15%. So in theory, you've got lots of time to see that this is flashing and to charge your keyboard. Like you shouldn't have a problem with this. If you have a problem that your keyboard's always running out of power, pay attention, dude. Like just uh, every Friday, plug it in or every two Fridays, plug it in. Once a month, plug your keyboard in and it'll be fine. I expect to get more than three weeks out of this because I never use backlights. I 
everyone loves them. I got the RGB one just so I could show it off in video. I never use them. They're turned off again because as far as wake up goes with the Bluetooth on the keyboard, it's fine. It's about average for the other keyboards I use, like for the bridge or anything else. You, I come in, I tap the space bar a couple times, the iPad wakes up and I'm into the iPad because Face ID IDs me and I'm done. I, again, this is another one where if you're complaining about, oh, it wakes up too slow. I just, I think you don't have enough problems. So do I recommend the Keychron K2? Yeah, I like it. I'm, you know, my journey has stopped at this point. It's certainly not in a rush anymore to find a new keyboard that works well. I'm happy with the Keychron K2. I still have the Ann Pro 2 on there um, as a keyboard I want to review. I've got a cool like fold out Bluetooth keyboard coming with a trackpad on one side that I might be a good portable iPad keyboard. We'll just have to see. It was $19 on banggood.com, so I got it. And we'll test it out and we'll see if it gives me a mouse and I can travel with it, then it's a pretty cool keyboard. Anyway, Keychron K2, decent keyboard, works well. I don't think there's any real like gripes with it. There's no glaring oversights with it. If you're like really into mechanical keyboards and want something you can like program macros into or program like a whole bunch of stuff, it's not gonna happen. I do like this keyboard. It's my keyboard for now. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, you can make sure you don't miss any by subscribing below. Make sure you hit that little bell icon so you get notifications if you like notifications. Although I gotta be honest, I hate them. If you'd like to support the channel, like to make sure that the videos keep coming, that the content keeps coming, you can support me on patreon.com slash Curtis McHale. Have an awesome day.